Hey guys, Jess Halleck here. So today I wanna to talk about something that isn't talked about enough, and it's actually super common, especially nowadays. And every time I talk to clients, it comes up and they feel so alone and confused, and so why not bring it up? So we're gonna talk about post-traumatic hair loss. This used to be something that probably one in 10 of my clients would experience, maybe two in 10. Um, most of the time it was postpartum, or if they had an extreme, um, like a big surgery happen or something, but nowadays it's a lot, lot more. And there's a lot of signs to help you know if this is what's happening and what to do about it and what to expect. So I asked Jordan to do this video with me because she is coming off of experiencing this. So a little bit of a backstory or just understanding how it works. Your hair goes into three phases, three phases, your antigen phase, your catagen phase, and your telogen phase. So your whole head isn't in the same phase at once. I think that's a big misconception people have. Just like if you were to get um, laser hair removal, they have you come back for multiple sessions, like every six weeks. It's because different hair is in a different phase. And so some's growing, some shedding, um, some is preparing to be let go. And so we have to keep doing it regularly. So your hair is the same way on your head. Um, so the antigen phase is the growth phase. That is when most people will see an inch of growth in two months or so. I think the, the metric is like one centimeter per month. And then the catagen phase is, that one's kind of confusing. It's preparing to release the hair and also preparing for a new follicle to come in. So that's the middle phase. Um, and then the telogen phase is the resting phase or also when the cuticle has been prepped to be released and a new hair is coming in, so that's what's shedding. So the telogen phase at any given point is usually 10 to 15% of your hair. And that's why as a hairstylist, when we see you shedding hair or if there's some hair in the brush, we're not alarmed because you're always shedding a certain amount of hair. It just shouldn't be a lot of hair. So what happens when you have post-traumatic hair loss, the scientific term is um, telogen elu elu alluvium or something. <laughs> butcher that part um but basically that means that instead of just 10 to 15 percent of your hair being in that stage because of an extreme stress on your body it pushes about 30 percent of your hair to that stage all at once so instead of it being like something normal that we're used to all of a sudden it's a lot and that's why after you are postpartum or have something big happen um then you will see about a third of your hair come out um, so, and especially specifically from ears and forward. So if you're having any hormone imbalances or a diet deficiency of some sort, you'll experience it in your temples, like pretty much from here forward. And then you'll notice that you still have a lot of hair in the back. You may see it a little bit um, along your hairline underneath. Your hairline is always susceptible to this. So what has changed in the last few years is if you're experiencing a really rough sickness, <laughs> then this is something that you'll see probably six weeks to 12 weeks after. Um, with the halo consultations that we do, we talked to literally thousands of people in the last year. And this was what, I didn't talk about it last year because I wasn't sure if it was like, if it was correlated or if it was kind of a fluke. And now a year, year and a half later, it is definitely something to expect if, if you got really sick. Um, so me personally, I, I experienced that, um, I got really sick last January, and then about April, for me, is when I really started to notice like so much of my hair out. And I did probably the worst thing. <laughs> I went straight to go get hand tight extensions in, which was, and I got a lot. I got really heavy hair, I got so much. So then when I finally took them out in September, um, I like bald because not only did I have that like hair dysmorphia that my hair is gone because my extensions are out, but I also was really seeing my hair for the first time with all of that loss. And so the next six months, I did a few things that made a huge difference uh, just to get through that period of, it was really, you know, hard. And then my hair started to come back and thicker and fuller and it was great. So Jordan is in that stage right now. Um, her hair is coming out of it. I don't feel like you're experiencing a ton of loss, but um, I was like, can you share just about the emotional 
part of it, because this is the part that kills me, is when so many of you don't know, you don't have answers yet, and you're like, oh my gosh, what's happening? So I was like, um, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, so I would say I got really, really sick at the beginning of August, and um, I was probably out of office, out of work for about two weeks, um, just in bed, super duper sick. And so I knew that it took a toll on my body for sure. And I got better. I started um, taking just more vitamins, feeling better and going back to work. And then about six weeks after I was sick, I just experienced extreme hair loss. And I normally have, I've always had really thick hair and I think that was something I took for granted. Um, I didn't ever worry about my hair with density, thickness or anything. Um, and I just, was taking showers, I was washing my hair, I was brushing it out, and it was coming out in clumps. Like and what was alarming? Like how, what was normal and what was a lot? Like normal kind of hair loss for me was just brushing your hair in the morning or at night and you'd see like your hairbrush has a little bit of hair but you clean it out afterwards and it throughout the day just noticed some hairs coming out, um, just normal shedding. But at this point it was my hair, my entire, entire hairbrush was full of hair. And when I'm showering, it's full on coming out and I'm putting it on my shower walls and I just am seeing it accumulating into this ball of hair. Um, and one of the girls at the salon was washing my hair and I usually go a really long time in between washing. Um, and she was like, maybe you should stop doing that because I just pulled all of this out and it was about a ball this big of hair. And a part of me was, like a part of me wanted to cry because I had just never experienced something like that and I was one day I was coming back into work and I, I was putting my hair up in a ponytail and I just kind of went back to pull it back and put it back and I was like I have no hair <laughs> and it was so sad to me um and then one morning I was pulling it back again and noticed that I have some not that I normally can't see my scalp and my hair um, when I pull this it back. Is, this is a good visual yeah. because this is where you're going to see it like right off the bat is in like ears and forward. So your temple area and it, she's a good example because her hair is dark. So you can see where the thinning is a lot better, but she's lost so much density through mm -hmm. here. Whereas like everywhere else, she's just, she's still, she's still overall lost a lot of her density, but like it was way concentrated in the front yeah i didn't want to wear i didn't want to have my hair up at all i didn't want to have a ponytail um i kept to keep my keeping my hair down the entire time because i was so insecure about it um definitely had a few crying sessions um called my mom crying one day and i was just i don't know i feel like i took for granted about how much my hair actually meant to me and just how much of a difference hair can just impact how I feel about myself and just self-confidence and just overall being. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just been an experience. I think I'm going through, I've been taking some supplements and I've been um, trying to just better my health, like eating better, um, been going to the gym more and just taking care of myself. And I've actually noticed a lot of regrowth happening. Um, it is a slow process. I do have some baby hairs. It's kind of hard to see, but it's slowly but surely coming That's back. All I need is a little bit. Just a little bit. Give yeah. me hope. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's been a process and it it's been hard. Um, and even now doing my hair, I'm still like uh, I just want to be back to normal. So yeah, yeah. And ironically, she's on our Halo team, so she like we're having conversations with people mm -hmm. all day, every day. And this is why I wanted to talk about it because I would safely say half of you mm -hmm. are thinking about extensions because you're in the same position. And so even though we've had these conversations with so many of you all the time, as she was experiencing it, it was still like, there's so much shock factor that happens and like, it's emotional. And so anyways, I wanted to talk, bring light to this, just so if you're in this stage, maybe, and you haven't gotten answers yet, or you've been going to different doctors trying to figure out why you're losing hair, um, because this even, this can just go back to like, um, if you had a divorce, if you had a big mm -hmm. um, surgery, if you lost a lot of weight quickly, if you were postpartum, um, if there's anything super high stress in your life, then that will cause hair loss just because it's a big hormone shift. Okay. So your, your cortisol spikes because you're trying to regulate your stress and this is, this is the result. So some solutions, um, because it kind of is what it is once it's shed out, but there is a time frame of when it comes back. 
So there are things you can do to definitely help it and not make it worse. So like she said, she made some changes like in her diet, made sure that she was getting enough protein, mm -hmm. um, enough of her, her vitamins were balanced, that she's taking a collagen. I would highly recommend a liquid collagen. That's mm -hmm. one of those supplements that's hard for your body to absorb. So liquid is great. Um, another thing you can do is if you are experiencing hair loss, I don't know if you've noticed this yet, but your scalp is probably more sensitive. Mm -hmm. It could be just that you can't do ponytails without it feeling like tender really quick, um, or even just to the touch, it could be as extreme as that. So that means that your scalp is inflamed. You're having inflammation reaction. So one thing that helps is to use a scalp oil. There are a few out there. The one that I recommend is linen. Um, and you just put a few drops along your scalp and that's gonna calm the inflammation so that your hair can start growing because it's like a vicious cycle. You go through this shock of, oh my gosh, I lost my hair. And then your high anxiety about it. But really we need to like get the body calm and doing what it needs to do and feeling good. So coming at it from a supplement perspective and topical will definitely help. Mm -hmm. Another thing I recommend is to start doing scalp care in general. So I recommend the Ensemble Score Brush. Um, this one is, it's stiff, but it's still gentle enough on your scalp that you're not gonna be aggravated by it. Think of your um, scalp like your skin on your face. You wanna be exfoliating regularly, um, not too often, but definitely at least a few times a week. And that's gonna remove the buildup off your scalp. It's gonna stimulate blood flow. All those things just to help your hair get back to where it needs to be. And then the last thing we do, of course, because this is very emotional when you're looking in the mirror and you're like, I don't look, I don't feel like myself. That's almost the hardest part. So halos obviously are amazing. She used to always wear a layered halo. And when this started happening, we're like, let's switch you to an original. Let's just go for thickness because we don't want to put any extra stress on your scalp. And again, you're more sensitive. Your scalp is more sensitive while this is happening. And this can last anywhere from a month to four months. Like it can range. So some people, it might just be a few weeks and some people they might be doing this, uh, dealing with this for a little bit. So I just want to show you visually how much of a difference it makes. This is just a 16 inch original. Um, we custom, do we tighten yours or do we loosen yours? Wires? Um, I'm pretty average in terms okay. of from the second one. Um, so just for a visual, we just want to give her a few extra inches or even just the same length. But the originals have 30% less hair than the layered ones. And so if you just want fullness or just, you know, an inch or two or something, this makes a huge difference. And it's very comfortable where you're not going to feel it on your head all day and just be your saving grace while you're in this process. Okay. As a visual, she could even go a little shorter if she just wanted fullness, but this is just a 16 on her. What's nice about when you put extensions through the mids to ends is that it does push up your top hair. So even though it doesn't give you more hair on top, it almost feels like you still do because it, it pushes your hair up. Mm -hmm. It's kind of weird to explain. <laughs> I'm wearing a layered 14 inch, so this just gives me fullness, but I like it because then I get a lot of volume. Mm -hmm. So. If you're in the stage, I just want you to know that you are not alone and there's a lot of different ways to come about this, but what you're taking um, in your diet, what you're doing topically to your hair, what you're doing coloring wise, um, and what type of tension you're putting on your hair, which does include extensions, definitely matters to make it better or worse. So I love to start a conversation about this. Um, so comment below if you have any questions or your experiences, I'd love to help in any way that we can. Um, being a hairstylist, there's lots of ways to go about it. Um, but if you would like any information about Ensemble, Lennon, um, the Halo extensions, then I will put all those links in the description and I can talk to you directly to get you set up with those things. But I hope this helps. It is going to pass. We're here for you. You're not alone. Just, it is what it is at this point, but it'll get better. <laughs>